Hello friends. Give me just a minute. Sorry for the delayed uh, start up here. Was having technical problems. There we go. I just about have it all. <laughs> Utakas salve primero. I'm not sure I said that right, but thank you anyway. <laughs> big big hello to you too. <laughs> So this is, <laughs> I'm not sure I had translated that correctly either, but <laughs> this is uh, Daily Out Adventure number 856. <laughs> Finishing a, a watercolor rendering. All right, let's get, let's get right to work and let me get you pointed in the right direction here. Um, I spent way too much time so far, and by the way, I'm quite unhappy with these marks up here. That's another story. Maybe I'll explain that later. But uh, I have basically, and let me be clear about something. This is not what I call a watercolor painting. That's why I entitled it, <laughs> Hello Uncle Sixty. Hello, Barbara. And by the way, Uncle, I did a big search for that uh, gift certificate from Olive Garden and could not find it. I found your receipt. I don't know if they'll let me use that. Um, now, couldn't find the e-card, and I did look quite a while for it. And I hope you guys are both painting while you're listening to me. <laughs> Barbara, I, I didn't finish, but I started watching your self-portrait. And it was uh, good to see your face. You are lovely. We won't. <laughs> we, we won't. We won't take it any further than that. <laughs> Goodness knows, in the current climate, if you <laughs> if you say anything positive about a woman's appearance, you can find yourself in deep trouble. I, I hope I'm being quite silly, and I don't know that I am. Anyway, it was. I look forward to watching you finish it. All right, so I'm going, I've got several steps left to, left to do on this illustration. Basically, all I've done up to this point, I know I, I could see that it was short, so I was very curious to see what you did in that short amount of time. Um, I don't have any, almost no shadows painted here. So step number one, I'm going to do shadows. And uh, then step number two, I'm going to pull out my gouache watercolors and and uh, cheat cheat like crazy again but once again because this is not a serious watercolor it's just just a rendering i'm just being paid for it that's all and it's just to show the client you know what this is going to look like so and Frankly, I'm, shh, don't tell anybody, I'll deny everything. I'm not very happy with just with the overall look of it. I'm, I'm hoping it's largely because it's so flat. And I certainly hope to fix that. So it's real simple. The sun is coming from the left. For some reason, I have the feeling that this photograph that I'm working from. Did I show you that? Here it is. For some reason, I, and I don't, I should have asked, I have the feeling that I'm looking to the um, south. That would mean this, a morning sun would be coming from the left. But to tell you the truth, I have no way of knowing that that's the case. <laughs> it doesn't matter. If we're looking to the north, then um, then this is the setting sun. All right, it doesn't matter. I'm getting bogged down in needless details. <laughs> since, again, since when did that ever stop me from talking? Anyway. And I remember talking so clearly yesterday when I was started this pen and ink rendering about the need for style, and then 
I don't feel like this has very much style at all. So now I just sound like I'm, I'm complaining. Oh, oh, it's I'm not. Uh, it's not done yet. Let's just we'll, we'll reserve judgment for when it's done. Okay, so I'm not really speaking negatively about the piece or the job. I'm just saying it's just not done yet. That's all. And my music died here. Let's see if we can get that going. It certainly shouldn't take long to get just shadows. I've mixed up a blue-gray watercolor, by the way, for these shadows. Nothing fancy about that. Here's my um, watercolor tray, by the way, and this is the the well that I'm. I've mixed up quite a quite a large batch of these colors, so I wouldn't have to worry too much about. I am one of those watercolors. I don't. I don't imagine I'm rare or unique. Um, but I pretty much paint with a brush in one hand, and notice, by the way, no two-handed painting in the watercolor world. Just my two-handed stuff emerged in my oil painting career. It didn't I paint with a brush in one hand and a Kleenex or tissue in the other. That's what I was going to say before I so rudely interrupted myself. All right, there, that didn't take long at all. There's a bunch of shadow. Now I'm gonna pick up a much larger brush and continue. The same, these light marks up here that I am not happy about at all. I really know better. Um, that's white out and it looked great on the illustration when, when the illustration was just black and white pen and ink. Um, the problem is that the white out repels watercolor so it retains that pale. So that has to be fixed. Um, I have a couple different ways of fixing it. I haven't figured out which way I'm going to use yet. One would be to do gouache. Yeah, I think I'm going to do 
so I started to do some shadows across this field and then got cold feet and quit. But I'm thinking that was a, a good impulse, even though logically it, there must be some really tall trees <laughs> off the outside the picture over here that are casting those shadows. I'm going to um, intensify the sh shadow side, the shady side of several several trees. Whichever trees don't have, I've done this. I did this already. I painted shadow. Oh, look at you guys chatting up a storm, and I'm missing you. <laughs> We're st we are staying home. I know. Yeah, uh, Uncle, nice indeed. Okay, the code on the receipt should work. Thank you, Uncle. Appreciate that. Very generous of you. Thank you so much. Uh, Barbara asks about the uh, the painting. Um, that's a good question. It it did and it didn't. Um, she's asked. I painted. I finished my last skyline of the city of Raleigh at a fundraiser last Saturday night, and. Um, the good news is, if you will, the good news is that my painting went for the highest price of, uh, uh, there were, there was one other painting that went for, for, um, it's, I think, there might have been two, but one or two paintings that went for the same price at the live auction and, and f Frank or clearly that's because the the other painting that went for the highest price was done by the executive director of the organization that we were raising funds for get it so people will people will often do that they'll they'll pay a high price for the honor of having a painting done by the boss so, so the good news is, uh, my painting went um, it for as much as any. The bad news is that I've I've done this now, fifteen years or so, and the bad news is that the the overall prices paid uh, at the live auction were somewhat less than than many previous years. So it was it was not a great uh, evening. I mean, I don't know. They they might have made more money doing other things, but uh, the the prices on the auction pieces were not as high as many other years. So, so there you go. Good news, bad news. I do look forward to receiving my check in the mail, though, <laughs> for half of what it sold for. I, before I started here today, I had just kind of a, a boatload of technical problems, and uh, now I'm having more. And my music keeps quitting on me. That's a pretty small one, I know. You guys can't even hear it, probably. It's just there to keep me calm down. Right, I feel like the, the overall the cast of the painting works a little bit better now. The values are a little bit better. So I think I'm ready to start going. Oh, right, I have some little figures here that haven't gotten any paint on them at all. Yeah, boy, we have, uh, yes, we have run out and got our bread, milk, and toilet paper and everything else. I spent a good deal of yesterday evening creating new space in the garage for shelves. So. Yeah, 
you are correct, Barbara. I did bring it. I did bring it home and um, work on it just a little bit, very little bit, maybe an hour, something like that. And oh, and of course, then I also painted the edges and I put a wire on it and I varnished it and I photographed it. All right, making a switch here. So this is my uh, gouache tray. Gouache, of course, is uh, just a opaque watercolor. And I always have a separate tube or tubes of white because <laughs> what in the world? Mixing white. That is weird. It's, it came out pink. Does anybody know, is mixing white supposed to be pink? I have another tube here. I don't trust, I don't trust white, uh, pink gouache. <laughs> what I'm doing here is trying to squeeze the last little bit out of an old tube. That is weird, y'all. Here, let me show this to you. It says, make, I, first of all, I don't want mixing white, period. I want titanium white. But look, when you open it up, oh, it's just the tube is pink. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that right there is pink. Pink as it can be. But when I squeezed out the paint, it was white. So <laughs> sorry, boy. That was pretty unintelligent. We're not gonna. We're, we're we I we <laughs> am not going to start worrying about how intelligent I have appear. Um, I'm debating whether to tackle this. These no, that's wet. I'll just leave that. Okay. One of the things I want to do is is fix. This is a. Cemetery plot, by the way, there. I don't know what they call them these days. It's where they uh, put jars of ashes in the ground. So whatever that's called, that's what this is. Okay. Back over to my. I sprayed this a while ago. This tray, whoops, sorry, hang on, hang on, is of course, is also made for watercolors. And um, a few of you, few people have asked over the years, so what kind of tray? Um, this one is right here. And this is distributed again. Most of my stuff comes from Jerry's Artorama because they're right here in my hometown and I work for them a lot. This is Paul McCormick watercolor kit and I like it fine. I like the deep wells, but there aren't quite enough small wells for my taste. I'm use, I use it anyway. Um, this has more small wells, I believe, so I like, tend to like it actually a little bit better. And one of the big challenges about gouache if you want to see some really good gouache painting by the way go over to um Dina james gurney dinatopia the dinatopia guy james gurney um one of the challenges of gouache is that it doesn't dry the color it is when it's wet. So always a little bit of a crapshoot when you're painting. I just, I was not happy with the way these little rows of pots. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Urns, 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 not pots. Urns, I'm not, in the, I'm not happy with the way 
they turned out. So let me mess with them a little bit and see if I can, I don't know, just make them look better. Um, so once, of course, once you start using gouache on a watercolor, then, it, then it's a real low class watercolor painting. Just want to make sure you know that. I'm sure you do. But it doesn't matter if you're, as long as you're not trying to get into a major competition, a watercolor competition, like American Watercolor Society or something. I say this all the time. I say it every single time I use, I do a broadcast where I use gouache. Like, okay, you can't get into American Watercolor Society. You know, again, as if that's a big deal. Most of us, most of the time, are not trying to get into. But I just, I'm always thinking there might be a beginner watching or an early journey painter watching. And I don't want to be confusing. Gouache is not allowed, so to speak. Um, it's not an official watercolor. Now let me hasten to add, as I often do, that my favorite watercolor painter in the whole world, probably, I mean, there's, there are many that are just so outrageously good, you want to slap them, you know? <laughs> I'm sure you're happy to know I want to slap you if you're that good. Uh, but my favorite, probably in the whole world, is Elvaro Castanet, I think, unless it's Castanet, C A S T A G N Castagnet, um, from Uruguay. <laughs> and I'm sure I'm not saying that right. Uruguay, for you Americans. Anyway, he, he is, if you want some inspiration, um, look up Elvaro Castanet. And uh, he uses white at the end of his painting process, which I think is just a hoot. So I don't know, you know, if he wants to win an international competition, if he just doesn't use white. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if he cares about that, but uh, he is a very highly respected watercolorist and, and he cheats. So there you go. So this, <laughs> that's the end of the story for today. I, I am liking what's happening here. I'm softening up. So if all the ashes are contained in pots, then I'm, I'm assuming that what we're seeing here is the lids of all the pots. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> right? They just take the take the pot and set it down in the little hole in in the cement <laughs> and come by and see. There's Grandma. <laughs> I am in a very irreverent mood. Guilty. My wife and I have both decided that we, we'd rather be cremated. So, but, <laughs> oh wait, <laughs> you guys are chatting and saying intelligent things. Nope, you're good, okay. Um, so I, I expect my ashes to be in a pot someday. I'm not sure, you know, how she's going to do this, but I've also kind of instructed my wife, and don't keep the urn, don't buy a fancy urn, don't keep it, and don't keep my ashes. <laughs> I don't know, I just, I just think it's kind of goofy. Not macabre, just goofy. Anyway, I'm sure you care what I think about such matters. <laughs> now that I'm happy with. So 
I have a whole bunch of little problems that I hope to solve with um, with gouache. And this this was the first one I decided to tackle was these patches of pots lids. <laughs> There we go. Much better. Whew. And all of my problems, I'm a little worried about. Well, not really. Um, one of the other problem, not problems, I'm sorry, I'm way overstating the case, is um, I want to paint uh, flowers on many of these bushes. I hinted at color. In the you see back here, red, orange, purple, orange, red, and so on. But I will definitely use some gouache to go into um, into those and bump up the flowers a good bit. And what else? Maybe maybe some highlights of highlights of greenery. Again, the goal of this an illustration like this is not to be a present a beautiful um, painting per se. It's to show the client what it's what it's going to look like but of course if it if it looks like a, <laughs> a competent watercolor well if it looks like a bad watercolor then I then my client is less likely to be hired for the job right this is a by the way this is pretty typical it's a big part of the reason why people hire an artist to do a rendering is because they want in this case he wants his company to get picked over the competitors for for this job. It's a it's a pretty big job. And entails all kinds of stuff. Um clearing trees, um installing underground uh irrigation. So my job is just is to when the, when he puts it under the nose of the boss person that the boss person who is probably not an art critic so he won't say hey this isn't a real watercolor this guy used gouache <laughs> right probably not probably not going to happen um Instead, his hope is that the client will go, ooh, pretty. And um, it's, it, it, I, forgive me while I ramble about my business for a minute. I think because I think it's an interesting um, combination of things. Um, so my client's going to label my client, the, uh, the landscape architect, of course, has told me, Every plant, every, let me show you my reference. So these are the two, these are the two pages. I'm missing one plant that I didn't put on here for some reason. But anyway, right? So I spent some time on the internet looking up. So my client will try to impress the builder, the, the owner of the property with how beautiful all these plants will be. But it's also kind of a psychological thing because he wants to convey a professional air, again, to the decision maker, mm -hmm. decision makers. And so if he has gone to the trouble and expense of finding and paying a professional artist to do the artwork for him, then he'll win points in the mind of the decision makers. I know you know all that, but just it's, it's, a, it's an interesting 
situation. Interesting study in psychology, really. See, I feel a lot better about the, my rows of pots now. Just have a little ways to go. Wow, time does fly when you're doing your artwork. I was hoping to deliver this to my client this afternoon. Well, I still am hoping to deliver it this evening, but I was hoping it wouldn't, I didn't want it to be late in the day. Here it is already 420, and I'm far from, far from finished. Time really does fly, you know, the, the old expression when you're having fun. I guess that's a good sign, I guess. <laughs> time, time really does fly when I'm, whenever I'm doing artwork. All right, I think that's done. My, my rinse water's straight up there ahead of me, as you can see. Okay, really, this these trees are driving me crazy up here, so. I think the first thing I'll do is just try to do some opaque mid-tone green on top of that. So this is my green tray as you, as you can see. dirty green, olive gray green, whoops, I just, I think I just overshot the mark, what do you think, too much, way too much red in that. some bright green to that. I should get my painting out of the way, shouldn't I? I can see some of you are saying, move your painting. No, you're, you are correct. I heard you. I heard your cries of alarm. <laughs> All right, I have right here I think I'm way too dark, but let's just go ahead and do a quick test. This is a piece of uh, paper, um, the same kind of paper that the illustration is on. So bear with me just for a minute. I'm going to make a loud noise just for a second and dry this. Okay, okay. 
All right. Whew. Now, let me show you a trick. I used to do this kind of thing back in the day, back in the airbrush day. I used to do this kind of thing quite a bit. When, you know, I was uh, matching colors in airbrush. And compare see if you, like you can't compare this to this because there's white in between all right so I need it actually a little certainly lighter that's the easy part but a little bluer so let's go back and pick up a different brush instead of using blue I'm just gonna use a, a blue green so it's a little bit more subtle of a shift My rinse water is now terribly contaminated. And Uncle, I am using, I don't know if you noticed, I'm using several of your brushes today that you sent at late uh, Christmas present. <laughs> Thank you very much. Still enjoying them. They're mixed in with my Windsor Newtons, you know, because not everything, not every stroke has to be a Windsor Newton, right? that well that is plenty close enough to get started so let's get started use about a number six here one of the nicest things about gouache is it it's very economical because you know, you don't have to clean stuff up. You just um, let it dry and you revive it um, next time you use it. With the one exception that I've learned that um, keep have a tube of white available. You certainly, you can revive, you know, re-wetten Rewet. <laughs> There's a word called rewet. You can rewet um, white gouache, but it just uh, it just never. It seems like it never gets quite white or opaque enough. Rewetted, rewetted white gouache. So that's why all the other colors. I feel like you can revive them just fine, but not that white so that's why I have a more or less continual supply of of white a tube of white okay, all I'm doing right now for, for better or worse is um Just covering up the ugly marks that I foolishly made. They were made, by the way, I don't know if you're understanding what's, what I'm working here. In the pen and ink stage, I used a whiteout pen to do some highlights in the, on top of the ink. It looked great. And I actually, I really do know better. I don't know why I thought I could get away with such a thing. Uh, there are ways to get around it. One is I could have I could have um, sprayed the whole painting with a workable fixative. And then the watercolor would have um, gone on top of the whiteout, but in a in a quite an unpredictable manner. So that's why that's why I didn't do that either. I 
And if you don't care about breaking rules or getting into a competition, of course, watercolor has more tricks. Up, it has a lot of legal tricks up its, up its sleeve, too. There are so many things you can do. All right, so that, at least I've gotten rid of the ugly light marks. Now, bear with me again. I'm going to blow dry this just for a minute and then begin cleaning up what I've done there. Hello, light blue. Hello, Travis. <laughs> Laughing at, at laughing at thinker eight 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 says me and James Gurney. Well, frankly, you, just you putting me and James Gurney's name in the same sentence says uh, <laughs> flattery enough. <laughs> we should start a a gouache club. <laughs> yeah, American. There probably is, isn't there? There's probably is. I'm sure uh, a gouache society of America. And if you don't, if you use, if you use transparent, you get kicked out. <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> Go snob the other, snobby in the other direction. If we find any transparent watercolor in your painting, you will be forthrightly kicked out of the club. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, you know, <laughs> I just, I, I'm not sure we could pull it off. <laughs> I, you know, I, for many years, I think like back in my 20s, I'm talking about maybe early 30s, I don't remember. Um, I resisted buying gouache <laughs> simply because I didn't know how to pronounce the word. We never used it in college. If, I'd have been, if I had been an illustration major, I would have known all about it. But I'd never heard anybody talk about gouache. And, and just looking at it on the shelf, you have to understand there was no internet back then. <laughs> there was no <coughs> YouTube. And you, couldn't ask, you couldn't ask Google how to pronounce words. So I just didn't know if it was gouache, gouache, gocho, <laughs> gaucho. <laughs> now, uh, let me hasten to add that once I realized <laughs> that that was the that that was the reason I wasn't buying gouache, then I <laughs> then I realized the foolishness of my position. I didn't. It was not a conscious thing. It was unconscious. <laughs> so I, many years ago, finally, as you can see, got over it and did indeed buy some <laughs> guache. <laughs> hey, uh, while I'm cheating at stuff using guache, um, I will for what it's worth, I'll pass on to you a few tricks about how to use guache <laughs> and get away with it, right? So not, I mean, not that I would try to get it, you know, try to get it past the American Watercolor Society, but I'm not, I'm certainly not above trying to get it past um, ordinary people. And I'm, I'm not going to try to disguise this one, but I, it turns out I am going to use one of the tricks right at the moment. And that trick is, well, here's, a, here's one thing you can do if you're doing a watercolor. And then you mess up and you have to fix it, say, with guache. <laughs> I can't help. Um, here's one of the... Remedies is do do then real watercolor back over on top of the gouache, and it largely, if not completely, now you have to remember you have to be careful because 
this gouache is not inert, right? It's still very unstable. So you can't rub your brush back and forth at all because it will just reactivate the gouache, turn it back into an opaque medium. But as you can see, you can quite handily do a single stroke on top of it and it now it would take quite the quite the skilled and careful study for most people to, to discern that there's any guache. <laughs> I just won't let go of a bad joke once once it's entered my mind, will I? <laughs> Mr. Nelson, why do you think so many people, so many people, like 14, why do you think so many 14 people? <laughs> Evidently, Mr. Three-year-old just tried to, was trying to execute a, a prison break by running into my studio, but his mother was right behind him. I don't know what that was about. Um, now, what was I saying? I'm sorry, I just... Believe it or not, ADD, dang. Um, I was talking about you can hide it. Oh boy, that is really bad. I literally forgot what I was about to say mid sentence. All right, that makes me feel better. I'm going to let that dry, of course. Now let's start doing um, let's start doing flowers. And for this, of course, I need to go back and refer to my go by sheet All right so these plants are Daphne's and here's the Daphne's right there speckled white and red which means they appear pink and it just so happens I do indeed already have some quite opaque enough. Let's try a little bit more. Yeah. You really can't even hardly tell that that has gouache on it, which of course is what I would prefer. So here's where I think I'm going with this, with the gouache touch-up. First of all, I'm going to paint all the flowers, um, whatever color is needed, in this case pink. And of course, of, of course, of course, I'm giving much attention to which way the light is coming from. That's obvious, I'm sure. And after all the flowers are accentuated with opaque gouache, then I will almost certainly do uh, light green highlights throughout much of the illustration. Just, to, just wherever it's needed, again, to accentuate the, the light source.
And then the final thing that I'll do after accentuating uh, white will be accentuating, accentuating, after accentuating the green, I'm sorry, will be um, doing just a little bit of com comparable to my oil painting sparkle layer. I'll just do probably pure white wherever it's needed, just anywhere. Right at the moment, I'm doing some pink. I don't, want, I don't know what kind of flowers these are down here. And I'm not at all sure that they actually have pink flowers. So I'm taking a little bit of artistic license right here. We have so many flowering shrubs in North Carolina. It's not hard to imagine that they some something with pink flowers. All right, enough of that. Let's do purple purple violet next. These are um, irises. And by the way, one definitely uh, fictitious element of this rendering is um, that I have all these different plants blooming at the same time, which would certainly not, certainly not be the case. But I, I, and here again, I didn't, I didn't specifically ask my client. I wish I had thought to, but I, I'm pretty sure that I know what the answer would be. My question would be, do you want me to make everything blooming or not? And they would have said, um, oh yeah, well, um, 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 yeah, I guess so. So I didn't even want to bother them because that's exactly, it's almost exact quote <laughs> of what any client would say when faced with that question. All right, now I did these trees. Tea olive. You know what I just realized? I'm missing a tree right there. Well, it's going to stay missed. It's, it's in that row. It's hidden behind. Anyway, it's a tea olive in there. A tea olive has white or pale green, very, very pale green uh, flowers on it. So I'll do almost white. All the tea olives right here. So one of the things that my client has done is they they have already um, designed in their minds. They've already designed. Um, which trees they would, and at least at this point, they're also telling their client, here's what we would put here and here and here and here and here. So that's, they've done that work, and so they want me to faithfully reflect their thinking to their client. Pretty standard, I guess, pretty predictable kind of thinking. I'm getting myself confused a little bit. Doggone it, I missed a tree on both sides. I 
I just got mixed up. And this is the, this is the tea olive, the thing I just painted. Those were fig trees. And I've got a tea olive missing right there. Ah, oh, I hate it when this happens. I am going to add it. I think that's a, that's an oversight that I can't live, they can't live with. It's going to be a little bit tricky painting that though, isn't it? So there's one there and there's another one over here. Start by painting it in watercolor and then we'll clean it up as necessary in with gouache. All right, while it's drying, let's move on to something else, come back to that. And uh, Sorry, you guys just got bumped. Sorry about that. This is a dogwood tree. Questions, comments, you guys. Are... Hello, Deborah. Oh, scratchy throat, low fever. Can I, can I change the music to Skyrim soundtrack? Uh, well, that's easy. The answer is no. <laughs> the, not because I wouldn't love it. I would, actually. Um, but I would get a friendly little uh, email from, from YouTube in the next 10 minutes telling me that I was in violation of copyright so that's why that's why I'm playing what I'm playing because it's the music I've paid for which is really a good deal by the way they have tens of thousands of songs to choose from and I my playlists are now um, into hundreds and hundreds of, of different uh, atmospheres, different themes. Usually I play something like what's been on today, which is, again, kind of Skyrim kind of stuff, atmospheric, new age, easy background music. But I have a bunch of other stuff too that I could, could play if I wanted to. All right, so these are some dogwoods. Again, everything's in bloom all at the same time, which is completely unrealistic. But they, I think this is what my client would want. So that their client can say, oh, I get it, those are dogwoods. Plus, of course, by making them all in bloom, and not all of them bloom, of course, they're, they're not all flowering trees, but by making them all their unique color. And I did, when I was doing the watercolor, as you can imagine, I paid you know, quite a bit of attention to my, to my reference photos to get the right color and and see that creates this variety that my client is anxious to show his client 
that they thought about this. I don't have enough room in my workspace here. In case, just in case you're wondering. I'm so crowded at the moment. All right, I have misplaced my, here they are. <laughs> Why don't you tell me? <laughs> All right, let's now correct my, continue correcting my earlier error. This is a I forgot already. See what is it? T olive. By the way, some of you might find this interesting. So this this burial plot, whatever they call it. Cemetery, New County Cemetery, is actually going out behind a uh, large Catholic church <clears throat> in our town. And um, so my client, I, I think, I get the impression that they did this on their own. I don't think, that, I don't think this was the instruction, but <clears throat> it's kind of, kind of clever, kind of cute. They decided to... Uh, to plant all the trees in the Bible, not, not every single one, <laughs> but all the trees that they've selected. Now, wait a minute, there's no dogwoods in the Bible. That can't be right. Anyway, that's what they told me, so maybe there are dogwoods in the Bible. I just never thought about it. Maybe they're called something else. But anyway, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Kind of fun, fun little detail. Okay, what does a fig tree look like? It's all just green. No blossoms here anyway. But they do have two pomegranate trees. Right there and right there. All right, and the pomegranates we are indeed going to put put um, pomegranates on it. And that's what a pomegranate tree looks like. It's kind of like an orange tree. <laughs> I'm kidding. Just because it has big orange fruits on it. drew little circles on this thing. Can you believe it? To represent where the pomegranates were going to go. I drew little circles on it that helps me be confident that I'm actually putting the orange fruit on the correct tree. All right. Rose of Sharon, Rose of Sharon. I think I might have missed another tree, boy. In my drawing, I thought I was being so careful. Looking again. Pop. 
pomegranate, tea olive, dogwood, those are shaman. Pomegranate, tea olive, dogwood. Oh, I just painted it wrong. Whew, that's a relief. Okay, now what does the Rose of Sharon look like? Oh, it has pink flowers. Whoa. So that's distinctive. All right. But I need to rescue. Here it is. This needs to be lighter colored right here. All right. Now pink, a brighter pink than the pink I was doing earlier, so. Yeah, more toward the top of the tree. Do you ever wonder, do you ever think, like the, the people at St. Catherine's Catholic Church who are going to look at this rendering would it ever dawn on them, honestly, how much work goes into something like this? And believe me, I'm not complaining at all, but it's just, it's just funny. I don't think normal people, and by the way, I think we're all human beings. We're all that way about other people's fields of endeavor. Like, You know, a major league baseball player could say, people have no idea how hard we have to work to get to this level. Generally, I think that's true. Same thing, musicians. And I'm not talking about level of, of I'm just talking about on this particular job, people, even, even there, people would be surprised, I'm, I'm thinking. I just decided to do some horizontal strokes, streaks, strokes. Okay, now I, get, I had this mix up where I missed a tree. Oh yeah, good. Well, it's largely recovered, I'm happy to say. to get this nobody will suspect a thing but I was mixing up fig trees and tea olives right and tea olives are the ones with the white blossoms so forgive me once again let's grab this make sure tea olive and then those two are tea olives. So, okay. Got it. Let's get that fixed. Okay? <laughs> you and me. <laughs> We're going to fix this together. We're all in this together. Yeah, Deborah, thank you for telling me they blow they bloom two months apart. <laughs> and this is not realism we're dealing with here. In fact, I, you probably know that that a good landscape designer, as I understand it, a good landscape designer actually designs the landscape to be in bloom year round. So there's always some different thing blooming. Not not everything all at the same time. But once again, I think, I think, I think my job here is to, to render these plants in bloom just so that the client can, can point out the different trees, the different plants to the potential buyer. I think I'm finished with colors. Yeah. Whew. 
That's a relief. Now, the next to the last, that would be penultimate. That's just a word I like a lot, penultimate. The penultimate task now is to uh, do green, pale green, light green highlights wherever they're needed. So I'm just mixing up a general batch of pale green. Oh yeah, this will help a lot on the sunny side of these trees. So you get a little bit of leaf action happening. And <laughs> you know, I do have to laugh at myself. Look at look at my grip, would you? <laughs> So, you guys, you've heard me rant and rave, rail against the the death control grip. You know, when it comes to oil painting. And here I am. <laughs> death control grip to beat the band. Just, just do it. And again, I know I don't need to defend myself, but I'll be just to be to be clear. This kind of illustration is this is a, a I'm reverting, if you will, be a fair way to put it. Um, I'm reverting back to. Um, hang on, I need to identify one of these trees here. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm reverting back to first half of art life uh, painting, right? Yeah, okay, it is a pond cypress. Okay. Um, my goal with a job like this, I am not, it's not to produce a painting, it's to paint a picture, paint a pretty picture. Okay, so indeed, so all, all the rules change, even how one holds the <laughs> the, the drawing device changes. I'm not, my first concern is not making interesting marks. That's a secondary concern, still a concern, but it's secondary. When you're in the first half of our journey, that is, whoa, a drip. I th oh my goodness, two drips. It's a good thing they, ooh, that doesn't look very good. <laughs> Doggone it. Have to clean those up. Um, and I think I've made it clear through my many, many years as a freelance illustrator, pretty much that whole, those decades, they were all, they were all first half of our journey. They were all Painting stuff that looks like stuff. That looks quite nice there, by the way. Let me zoom in just for a second so you can see the effect along that edge of that tree. about to lose my in-ear monitor, but I th think we're okay. Um, we don't seem to have had any, had any props for a while, so I'm just going to let it go. And um, if bad things start happening, I'll, I'll hear it about 30 seconds late instead of two seconds late. Hello, Marcelo. <laughs> How's it going, Master? Well, there you're very, very kind. <laughs> With every movement, the image scans. Oh. <laughs> Trent. 
Travis says he would visit the Ash Depot. <laughs> Is that the official name? That's beautiful. I love it. Ashes Depot. Ashes are us. <laughs> uh, that's good. Well, I am, I'm, I'm just sitting back now for the first time in many minutes and taking a look at it and saying, okay, uh, it, it is looking much better. Um, you know, again, my, my hope goal is that the, um, the buyer client will be rocked back in a, in a good way, that they'll be very pleasantly surprised and, uh, just this this last stuff that I'm doing is is making quite the difference. I'm happy to happy to say. Now, you know, whenever I, I'm doing an illustration, and um, and indeed still tapping into universal principles of art, I always find that I always do find that that fascinating. And and here's there's a couple right now that that I'm tapping into right at the moment. And that is, uh, number one, our, the human eye is inexorably drawn to punctiliar light, to points of light, correct? Hang on just a second, let me check. Yeah, I need to change to a yellow or green here for a minute. Um, and so the, The little sparkle that I'm putting on, in, with green in particular, is is yielding to that um, to that principle that our eyes really like to see little specks of, of light, and so the painting is looking better. Here's a closely related one. Of course, our you do darks first, lights last, and the lightest lights last last. I've never said it that way exactly before. Let me say that again. Everybody knows you do the darks first and the lights last. But that principle carried out to its logical conclusion means you do the lightest lights most last of all. And and that's just that's what I'm doing. And so things look good generally when you're accidentally following these fairly universal rules. Uh, you, you always do the lights last, not in watercolor, of course. Well, sorry, I am doing watercolor. I mean, not in, not in traditional watercolor. And that's why what I'm doing here is not at all traditional because I'm doing a lot of gouache, which means I'm, I'm acting more like a, you know, an opaque medium painter, a, um, um, because the medium that I'm using right now, of course, is indeed opaque. And I'm reminded, even as I'm doing this opaque gouache, I'm just reminded how much, how much easier, you know, the opaque mediums, oil and acrylic in particular, how much easier they are than, than watercolor, right? I mean, everything I'm doing right now, you real watercolor painters are going, oh man, I wish I could do that, right? Because, and I do real watercolor paintings. You. you may know that, probably do know that, every once in a while, partly just to <laughs> prove to my, for my ego, <laughs> partly just to prove to myself that I can still, yes, if need be, I can still do a real watercolor painting. Um, and you, you can see those on my website, dannelsonart.com, hit paintings, then go to the, the, uh, the, 
watercolor page. Uh, on that page is a mixture of uh, real, traditional, literal, official watercolor paintings and um, and these these cheater, what I call cheater watercolors. So anyway, I, d I do do them. In fact, I just saw one on my, I forget where I was, maybe Fine Art America the other day. There's a real nice painting, if you want to see one in particular, of a fire truck, the watercolor painting of a fire truck that I intentionally did 100% legal. There's no, there's no cheater on, on that one. No white, all the white on that is, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm not speaking, having done it quite a while ago, like a year and a half or two years, two or two, two and a half years ago. Um, all the white is scratched, you know, either lifted out or scratched out or something. Anyway, here I am though doing it the, the dumb way, the easy way. And again, because the effect is, it, it, you can achieve the real, realistic effect so much more easily. It always amazes me, honestly, how many beginning artists, you know, people that take up art in their retirement gravitate so often to watercolor. And I usually slap my forehead and say, what are you doing? <laughs> this is so hard. Far be it from me f from discouraging anybody from doing any kind of artwork. But if you want to do something hard, do watercolor. If you want to do something easy, <laughs> oil is the easiest. I'm sure you all know that. By the way, speaking of oil, <laughs> um, <laughs> that was a strange segue. Um, this past Wednesday, so Three days ago, um, I had my first, at the moment I'm calling it Painter's Critique, and um, once we get all the, once I get all the bugs worked out, I did it locally here, had about a dozen people there, they all seemed to have a good time and walked out with a, with a glow in their face and heart, it seemed. Um, Anyway, I'll describe it to you because it is something that I certainly hope to do uh, in the not too distant future. Let me get the bugs worked out first. And then we might call it online painters critique or online painters forum, something like that. And the format is very simple. Um, you sent me a picture, a photograph of your painting. I if need be, tweak it, fix it in Photoshop, if need be, and print it out onto canvas. Now, at the moment, I only have, my canvas is only 8.5 by 11, so it's fairly small. But even so, with a camera, I can zoom in pretty tight, tightly, so that you can see what's going on. Anyway, you send in, you send me your photograph of a painting. I print it out, <clears throat> and then during the critique, where I am kind and generous and merciful, <laughs> to beginners of every stripe, of every stripe. Um, and then I paint my suggestions right onto your um, canvas. And it's, it's a really, I think it's a great way to teach art. And I, I finally just did it for the first time this past week. And, and uh, my impression my impression was was encouraged that this is a good idea. This this is really a good way to teach. And uh, so, as I said, I look forward to working out the bugs over the next three months or so. And then inviting you guys. I will have to come up with a with a with a price break you know I don't, I don't know I'll need help with all that kind of stuff um,
but I, I really am excited about it. I think it's going to be fun and helpful. I think you said, again, people walked out the other night quite pleasantly surprised, I think. Perhaps the last stage of this process, which is white, white highlights, putting out a little bit more of a fresh white wash with the pink lid, I don't know, I mean pink top of the tube. <laughs> it's a real mystery. And white can go anywhere. Um, I'm just kind of dancing around here. I don't have a real clear idea. See you, Travis. <laughs> Thanks for coming by. Have a great weekend. Oh, that's right. I've got this little mess down here I need to clean up. Remember? down here where I spilled green paint. <laughs> it's always something, isn't it? Just always something. <laughs> Clean up this mess. Yeah, and down here too. So, no church tomorrow at our house. <laughs> Probably the same at your house if you're people that normally go to church. It's all been canceled, hasn't it? We're thinking, I don't know, I don't know we can pull it off tomorrow night. Or tomorrow, I mean, I don't mean tomorrow night, I mean tomorrow. Um, but we're thinking about inviting people in our neighborhood to come to our backyard and have worship and prayer in our backyard. And part of what makes that, well, there's a lot of things that make that feasible. <laughs> Number one, uh, every adult in the house is an accomplished musician. <laughs> that helps a lot, especially my daughter, who's a uh, 37-year-old daughter, who is an outrageously gifted singer and worship leader. And I'm, I'm not just a proud papa, I am that indeed, but you know, I try not to brag too much about her, but I've often wondered what would she do on American Idol or America's or The Voice or something. She would, she would not be eliminated early on, I can guarantee you that. She's truly gifted and more than just musically, she's spiritually gifted too.
So that makes, you know, the prospect of having a worship event in your backyard. Oh, it helps if you have one of those in your back pocket. <laughs> oh, and by the way, here's my daughter. <laughs> okay, just open your mouth. There you go. <laughs> um, but we also, I have, you know, the sound system, everything, 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 everything. So we'll see that life is interesting, isn't it? <laughs> we were saying the other day, just when you thought life couldn't possibly get more interesting, <laughs> Uh, here comes this Corolla virus. <laughs> and yes, I am saying that on purpose. One of somebody, some one of my crazy friends said they, they drive a to Toyota Corolla. <laughs> so he's afraid he has a Corolla virus. Um, and yes, I do think Corolla virus is a great thing to make fun of. <laughs> it's getting way too serious around here. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yes, Barbara, I wish we could zap you into our backyard. Part of the I, I'll just describe a little bit. There's a there's a long history here. I used to be a street performer and am still hope to do it again in the future, but because of that, I have um, kind of a, I don't know, either the, the world's biggest pedal board, if you know what that pedal board is, like what guitar players use to change all their sounds. Um, I'm sort of a one-man band, and so when I plug in and play, um, I have a whole bank of uh, synthesizers and processors that my sound gets processed through. So I might strum a guitar and out comes French horns, violins, choirs, and angels singing, you know. So that makes a really nice background. The, the on top of that I can play, so I can record that and then play on top of that. So that's just a little bit. And then my daughter's voice on top of all that makes this all sound really good. <laughs> and my wife, if we could persuade my wife to play, she's a piano major way back in the day. She doesn't enjoy playing that much anymore, but she's still very good. Anyway, there you go. So enough, enough of me jabbering about. I think I've <laughs> jabbered on just about long enough. Let's see if I can get this lined up just right. Bear with me just a minute here so you can see it all finished. Pretty much all finished. There, good enough. Um, I'll probably think, I think I'll do this after this dries. I'm going to do some cross hatching in here. And um, And I'll just think about it before I deliver it to my client. But it's essentially done, and I think they'll like it. And I, again, thank you for your company, you guys. Let me point you so you can see my wonderful face. <laughs> wonderful indeed. Oh, here, let's do this before... Before we go, let's, let's do the, the great reveal. This is always, this is always great fun, isn't it? It's kind of like Christmas. And I'm going to sign this painting, not because it's some big, you know, masterpiece, but once again, because uh, that gives my client credit gives him points so that when he takes this to the potential buyer, the potential buyer sees, oh wow, it's an original work of art. It's not a, you know, it's not a computer CAD drawing. Of course, this is obviously not a CAD drawing, but be that as it may, the signature is all part of that, all part of the deal, part of the professionalism trying to make it impressive. In 
fact, I might even I might even put a little mat around this uh, little frame. So, once again, there it is in bad light. Thank you guys for, for your company. I appreciate it immensely. Have a good weekend. Bye.